pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On, on this day, Wednesday, November 13th, 2013, at 4.02 p.m., the regularly scheduled board meeting of the Chicago Park District is being held in the 8th floor boardroom at the Administration Building at 541 North Fairbanks Court, Chicago, Illinois. Will the Secretary take a roll call of the Commissioners? Yes, sir. Commissioner Koldyke. Commissioner Salgado. Here. Commissioner Allen. Here. Commissioner Edwards. Here. Vice President Lavelle. Here. President Robert. Here. Quorum is present. Let the record reflect that General Superintendent Michael Kelly is also in attendance. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this meeting will uh, please come to order. Item number one, approval of the meeting minutes from the regularly scheduled meeting held on October 9th, 2013. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, Secretary, take a roll call vote for the adoption of the matter. Yes, sir. Commissioner Salgado? Aye. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Vice President Lavelle? Aye. President Robert? Aye. Motion carried and the minutes are adopted. Uh, next on the agenda is the people in the park section. Will the secretary please call the names of those who have signed up to speak? Yes, we ask that you please limit your comments to two minutes. Our first three speakers are May Toy, Louise McCurry, and Lita Dolly. Ms. Toy? She's not here. Ms. McCurry? Louise, you're up. All right, Ms. McCurry? Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing us to speak this afternoon. Uh, I come today representing the Jackson Park Advisory Council and particularly our sports committee. Over the last six months we've been working at looking at ways to get more kids active doing more things in the park. So we brought a couple of some suggestions forward in hopes that uh, you guys that would find the money to make it possible to make it happen. First thing, and I apologize for not making lots of pictures, but on our fields at 63rd and Lakeshore Drive, since 19... 57, I'm told. There have been a set of permanent goals, football goals that have been there that are rotting out. I'm sorry, rusting out, been rusting out for years. Unfortunately, what happens is that when people use the area around that goals, you get permanent run lines, and then the fields are ruined. When AYSO came there in uh, 1992 and we started doing our own fields, we proceeded to change the fields every single season so there are no permanent run lines. You don't have permanent goal uh, depressions. And it worked really well. And then someone... Then a certain someone in the park district decided to put permanent goals back in again, and now we have permanent run lines and big holes and gaps. <coughs> and so what we would like to ask, our coaches are really, really good at putting together goals, setting up goals, and moving goals. We can do all of that. We have four-year-olds that can help set up goals. What we'd love to do is get have the park district purchase again three sets of movable goals that would allow us to change those run lines every year instead of spending $150,000 every two years for a new field. It would be really, really nice if we could just do what we used to do, which was put seeds down. Many? I'm sorry. Uh, let me hurry. Uh, put seeds down and fix the fields. Uh, second is that there are a lot of kids in the neighborhood who would like to learn how to sail. Previously, my kids all learned at the 63rd Street Beach for the park district. Uh, they had sailing and swimming classes there. We'd really love to get those back again. Third thing is, uh, the fields at 63rd and Lakeshore Drive in the wintertime last winter were used by a whole crew of cross-country skiers and snowshoers. I was amazed at the number of people who were out there. It would Please be make your closing remarks. Fulton, you, the park at Fulton used to have a winter festival where they brought uh, cross-country skis in. The whole neighborhood came in, and that's how I learned to cross-country ski. We'd love to have our field at 63rd and Lakeshore Drive have that happen again. I'm sorry if you're going too long. Also, we're inviting you all to come to our opening of our playground uh, Friday afternoon at 3.30. Thank you. Can I ask you a fast question? Yeah. Um, the uh, artificial turf field at Jackson Park? The artificial turf field is fantastic. It's wonderful. The only difficulty with any artificial turf field always is it's taken over by the adults, and the adults use okay, it regularly. Can I, can I just ask you a favor? Could, the, could, could you? The Chicago Bears were extremely generous and donated 
you know, in excess of a million dollars to yep. help us get artificial turf fields yep. done. Yep. We've done some stewardship and gotten back to them, but it would mean a lot if someone, you know, from yep. the community who's actually using that. Yep. So I'll get some contact information Love to you, to. but I wonder if you could just send them a note and let them know here we are two years later because we'd like them to continue to be our partners in philanthropy, and, and that would help us with that stewardship. It's a useful time all the time as long as there's light. So, yeah, okay. absolutely. It'd be wonderful. All right. Well, I'll get some contact information sure. to you folks at Bears Care then. Love to. Good. Love Thank to. you. Sure. Lita? Um, first, I just wanted, as a rest with Ridge uh, neighbor um, near Indian Boundary Park, I wanted to thank uh, the board and the staff and Pat LaVar and his staff for taking the time to listen to the input um, on the zoo area and also to say that I was very happy to see that the zoo integrity of the zoo area is being maintained so that part of the history of that park will not be destroyed and um, will just be repurposed. Um, lastly, um, I just wanted to state that I hope that in the spring the park district can find a way to clean out the lagoon area, which this year was so murky that you couldn't even see the fish. I'm surprised that they were even able to, to make it. So it would be really nice if we could clean up that lagoon water and dredge it a little bit so that uh, kids can enjoy watching the fish. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Our next three speakers are Leroy Bowers, Ian Vidry, and George Blakemore. Good afternoon, commissioners. Good afternoon. Superintendent, thanks for giving me this opportunity to speak. Leroy Bowers from Washington Park Advisory Council. And the letter I just passed out uh, is uh, in regards to the upgrades in Washington <coughs> Park uh, for 2014 coming up. And this is uh, kind of a shopping list that uh, the council has put together and the things that we need to have done. Uh, the, of course, uh, fields are going to be renovated in 2014 so that, that that's really looking good the ball players are real happy with that but we're only looking at 10 fields and we're looking at seven not being done so we need to get those other seven done because we're using all of those fields. Uh, of course uh, we're looking at uh, continued uh, drainage repair uh, on the 55th Street side of the Harold Washington Common Ground and then, of course, uh, as you can see down the list, uh, regarding the legislation that just been passed uh, in Springfield with uh, the Honorable Senator Maddie Hunter, uh, and that's been signed off uh, by Governor Pat Quinn uh, for the night lights on Diamond One. And then also, we are requesting uh, some upgrades on the night lights on the softball Little League Diamonds as well as adding some night lights to Diamond 5 in Washington Park. Is that covered by the? That part is not. OK. 30 seconds remaining. Thank you. Uh, so and then also, as, as we're doing the work, uh, we hope that you will keep us uh, informed so oh, we can have right. you know, input into help and, and be able to help in this. Yes. Certainly appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Yep. And look to see you soon. Good to see you. Thanks. Thanks. See you. Good afternoon to the citizens of the city of Chicago and to the board members of Chicago Park District. Goods, the Park District provide goods, jobs, services, and contracts. You have a capital fund. You're constantly building, remodeling, with your artificial turf, building new parts. I will encourage you and your contract 
compliance off to go on the spot. Just don't use the vendor at the table. And make sure that these people working on these jobs are legal citizens of the city of Chicago, of the United States of America. Sometimes you get them on the job, they come from Wisconsin, Indiana, but up there still legal. So when these vendors fill out that affidavit of the workers, if you don't have enough people to work on and come track and compliance, get them there to actually go out on the job and go from one to the other and to the other. Because our people in the black community, we need to work. We need money. We need to work. And this is an opportunity for our 30 people. 30 seconds remaining. This is an opportunity for our people to get jobs because the park district are in the business, not only the park, maintaining these parks, you need goods, jobs, contracts, and services. And I want to see people from the black community receiving these goods, these jobs, these contracts and service. And the last thing I want to say, artificial turf. You have exceeded your two minutes. Sure. But nothing like the green thing. And as a little child, you remember learning that song, the green grass grows all around, not the rubber. You remember that. Some of you old school, that little song, the green grass grows all around and around. Uh, we don't need these rubber ass for a jungle. Please we make need your closing remarks. nature. And thank you very much, young lady, for reminding me of my, my time. And remember, in our community, we need jobs, and we need to get some of these jobs here at the Park District. May God bless you, and in return, may each one of you bless somebody else. And happy Turkey Day, happy Thanksgiving, and may God bless you. Our next three speakers are Elise Denard, Daniel Ebel, and Dan Miller. Ms. Denard? Mr. Ebel? I'm sorry, Abel. Sorry. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Daniel Abel. I'm with a group from Indian Boundary Park. Um, uh, if done right, information presented visually allows us to understand information quickly and easily that otherwise would take uh, many rows of text to convey. That is why visualization is a multi-billion dollar trend on the internet. Uh, to that end, um, I'm here to present a couple of web apps that I've been working on to encourage uh, Chicago residents to explore parks and make use of uh, some of its amenities. Uh, the first app, um, I, submitted, I submitted some papers earlier. The first app launched a little over a month ago, has a modest following. Uh, it encourages residents to explore uh, the natural areas uh, within Chicago parks. Uh, it does this by drawing on a database of nearly 200 venues throughout the Chicago Park District. Uh, the second app, a prototype at this stage, I launched a couple of weeks ago based on residents' request for it uh, from the Park District's uh, MindMixer website. It's a map of all the Wi-Fi access points in the park, uh, throughout the park uh, system at this time. I've received some positive feedback and cooperation in, the, in, the, in its development from the Park District uh, personnel, people like uh, Brendan Daly, Tanya Anthony, Patrick Callahan, and Ed uh, Reinerson. I look forward to more uh, co-creation opportunities with the Park District and um, I'm working on uh, gleaning more information from uh, Chicago residents from the MindMixer uh, website, and there are more apps uh, like it to come. Can we use that as a testimonial? I mean, that, that's exactly what MindMixer was set up for, and that's what we hope to encourage is uh, people like yourself developing apps. Uh, 
I noticed that, yeah, there's at least one sentence at the very beginning that you're encouraging like citizens to come forward and you're not necessarily looking for uh, corporate entities right. and you're not necessarily looking for uh, solutions that cost money. That's 19 like, seconds remaining? I think more once. I mean, just <laughs> you get more time once I stop talking. Yeah, my text is, is complete. We're just <laughs> in, engaging in conversation here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And uh, if you want, you can check it out. And I've noticed that uh, throughout the there are people from uh, the Park District itself who have visited. Uh, the, the, the app that encourages people to explore nat natural areas is called Act Natural. Cool. And um, I'm looking for a domain name. I'm going to ultimately move it to there. And I've encouraged the Park District, if you want to, you could use the code itself because I have other things to build. And uh, Park District personnel have visited uh, from the Park District itself 50 times, according to my web log. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank You're thank welcome. You. Miller? Good afternoon. My name is Dan Miller. I'm here on behalf of People, U People United to Improve Indian Boundary Park. And my purpose is to give you an update on the meetings that People United and the Indian Boundary Area, Indian Boundary Advisory Council have had with the architects, planners, and landscapers who are repurposing the former zoo area and Indian Boundary. Steve and Grant, Eric Sprague, and Rob Raymond met with us on October 15th at Warren Park and gave us a rundown on their plans for what they now call the nature area. Members of People United and the Advisory Council met a week later to discuss what we were told, and the plans met generally with favorable reaction. We feel that the plans include many of the aspects that we sought as community people, including repurposing of the Swan Huts, areas to develop educational programs, no community gardens, thank goodness, and most importantly, the enclosures themselves that were part of the old zoo would be retained. We're not getting some things we sought. Animals such as goats and llamas won't be back in the park, but no one really has expected that anymore. We're looking forward to a meeting December 5 at Warren Park with the staff that will give us another iteration of their plans, and there's a possibility of another community meeting in January. Because of your support as commissioners, meetings at, at previous meetings like this, we feel that we have a working relationship with the Park District staff and planners that we didn't have last summer when plans were first disclosed to close the zoo and remake Indian Boundary without community input. As you heard my colleague Daniel Abel part, report, we are here to offer our hands and our minds. We want to help. 30 seconds remaining. And we've got some pretty good ideas. We think we have that relationship now. We expect it to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Share a word of congratulations to everyone involved. You know, anytime uh, you, know, you have a community efforts like this, and we engage with them with good productive outcomes, it's a, it's a thing to celebrate. So congratulations to everybody involved. It's a, it's a tribute. It's a tribute to Pat and all the, the Park District team in the audience, as well as the community. Mm -hmm. Our last two speakers are Cecilia Butler and Audrey Fisher. <coughs> Good afternoon. I'm Cecilia Butler, Washington Park. Uh, before you start counting me down, I'd like to give you an update on the Dr. Burroughs Commemorative Stamp Committee. We have well over 6,000 signatures, and we've spoken to uh, Congressman Danny Davis, who sits on the Postal Committee, and he told us to continue to collect signatures. And that's why we need, um, if I can get some OKs, to take them into the field houses. Okay, do that. And um, we now need letters. So we're at the letter campaign. So put your writers together. I know you can come up with a great two-pager with all the work Dr. Burroughs did. Have you ever met Kim? Kim. Kim. I haven't been here in a, a few months, so I... It's Kim Dubuque. Okay, Kim. Dubuque Kim. will help you off on that right. end of it. Okay, good, good. Now, start my time now. I want to thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you for the lockers. We got new lockers. I mean, those old lockers are in the Smithsonian. But we have new lockers. The Youth Fitness Center is open. And we're using it. We didn't do the ribbon cutting, but that's fine. It was ready, and we moved. And the young people are enjoying it. Of course, we want to thank you for the ball for, uh, field rehabilitation. Um, we feel we have three people that should be on that planning uh, discussion, and of course that's Mr. Hill, Mr. Bowers, and Sarge. 
They have over 120 years of experience in Washington Park, and they need to be whatever, anything that's happening on the ball fields. 30 they seconds remaining? They wouldn't do it any other way. Okay. Now, we do have a problem with the naming of Pain Drive to DuSable. If you haven't heard of it, that is what has been put out there. And uh, to me, that's an insult to the city of Chicago. The uh, first resident of Chicago should not get less than a mile within Washington Park. He deserves Lake Shore this is Drive. This is you nice. know? And uh, the closing of 57th Street mm -hmm. at Cottage Grove, that's a problem. And it must be discussed openly right. with the entire community. Please make your closing remarks. And the closing of Diet School. There's one more year, I've been told. If it's closed, we need to get that property back, that land back, and turn it back into a park. But it should not go to uh, charter school. You have exceeded your two minutes. So um, I want to thank you. And maybe next month, if not, have a good new year. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Fisher? Hello. Hi, my name is um, Audrey Fisher. I'm uh, director of Chicago Astronomical Society and uh, founder of One Star at a Time and uh, now a climate reality leader trained by Al Gore, so I'm really excited about that. Please speak up. Okay. Um, there's something coming up. Uh, we've got a um, the great uh, march for climate is, is going to happen. Uh, walkers from one coast to the next coast will be walking to raise awareness about climate change. And they'll be coming here in uh, September, uh, around September 6th or so. And um, also International Starry Night is going to cooperate with that during the Perseid meteor shower. Just like there's Earth Day, we're trying to get Star Night established. Of course, I'm, I'm really, really hoping that uh, Chicago leads the way about um, restoring starlight over a city by paying attention to what kind of lighting that we use and that we use Northern Lee Island the Museum campus for that. And, uh, and I have a picture I'll show you of some new innovative ways to, uh, that they're lighting up bicycle paths in the Netherlands and in England and uh, using glow-in-the-dark technology. It's just beautiful and they don't need street lights or if they do use street lights, it's minimized. And I'm concerned about Mayor Bloomberg, who's uh, bragging about um, installing 250 of the brightest lights on the planet. And uh, 250,000. And the problem is, I have no problems against LED lights. I'm a pro I have a big problem with the blue spectrum of, the, of the LED lights. And in here, I have a, do a, a document that proves why uh, the bright white lights are dangerous. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further speakers. Uh, next on the agenda is presentation of the departments. We will uh, first hear an update from the executive director of the Chicago Parks Foundation, Willa Lang. My name, my name is Willa Lang, and I'm honored to present to you this afternoon. Thank you, Commissioners, President Traubert, and to you, Superintendent Kelly, for your time, consideration, and support. And I publicly want to thank my colleagues at the Chicago Park District for their hearty and warm welcome and onboarding. Uh, that I've experienced these last few months. I thought that I would just start by saying, uh, just speaking a couple minutes about who I am because I've not had the pleasure to work with many of you before. I'm a graduate of the University of Illinois. I received a master's in social work from Loyola and one of my very first jobs in Chicago was working with Bill Curtis as a producer for his educational and environmental documentaries. After five years in the Department of Development at the Museum of Science and Industry, 
managing their President's Council, Columbian Ball, and other special projects. I took a position as CEO at the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois, where I served for 15 years. I participated on the Governor's Healthcare Transition Team, chaired the Secretary of State's Task Force on Organ Donation for about six years, and, and served on the State Diabetes Commission as well. I left my role as Vice Chancellor of Workforce and Economic Development at the City Colleges this July to take this position. And I feel very honored and privileged to do so. At City Colleges, I developed more than 100 unique partnerships with industry all across the city. And some of those relationships can support our work here with the Chicago Parks Foundation. I feel that we are at a pivotal moment with our parks and programming here in Chicago. There is no other city in this nation that provides the breadth of programs and facilities over such a vast geographic area that touches all ethnic groups and people of all ages. But it costs a lot of money to operate and maintain. And as a 501c3, the Chicago Parks Foundation will be able to seize that opportunity. We will be able to partner with the corporate community and with our community leaders to help provide that much needed fundraising and outreach that I think could best serve the Chicago Park District. Every great city has foundations and alliances that provide financial support to their parks and cultural programs. We need to be a part of that philanthropic landscape as well. <coughs> with a foundation that has diversity in its board members and its outreach. One, can, one that can bring some of Chicago's great industry, conservation, sports, cultural thought leaders to work side by side with the communities to support great ideas that are progressive, innovative, and relevant, and that will promote the quality of life, environment, and well-being that the vast network of Chicago parks provide. I look forward to working with each and every one of you to build the Chicago Parks Foundation. We will be closely aligned with our Chicago Park District. We will work together to structure a transparent fundraising process, consistent communication, and help cultivate strong relationships in our communities. And together, we will help fuel the passion for our parks and the role they play in developing young minds and keeping families safe and connected. I prepared a very brief update on the status of the Chicago Parks Foundation. What is, what is the role of the Chicago Parks Foundation and where are we at now? We are, we are the philanthropic arm for the Chicago Park District. We will be raising significant funds. We will be soliciting support from corporations and foundations. And we especially want to engage their corporate social responsibility grant makers. We want to connect with the park resources, with community-based organizations. And we want to work with the park district to increase public awareness and use of the Chicago Park District resources and programs. And most importantly, we want to develop meaningful long-term relationships with individuals and organizations. This is a timeline, uh, talks a little bit about what has happened over the last um, few months. Um, but it really begins with the board approval of funding, stipend funding for the Chicago Parks Foundation. I began in July of 2013. And in that time period up to, up to now, here in November, we've really established the bones and the structure of the organization whether it's a donor database, the insurance, um, all the things that we need to carry on a 501c3 organization has been established. And we are now in the board recruitment phase. In the process, I've also worked with many Chicago Park District um, staff and departments assisting in the grant applications that we've had um, going on, whether it's with the Cubs or the Bears, um, People's Gas with our Community Garden Program. All these things I've been um, working hand in hand with Park District staff as, as a team. And I look forward to that continuing. The goal of a board development for the Chicago Parks Foundation is to really focus on a diverse board. 
we really want to make sure that our board represents the communities um, with, with whom we work and serve. And we want to develop board members also as subject matter experts in architecture and landscape, culture and arts, the environment, health and wellness, sport and recreation. And among these board members, we will develop an executive committee who will help us refine and define our governance, financial, and membership policies. We look forward to connecting our board members to the personnel of the Chicago Park District working hand in hand so that they understand the programs and um, the impact that it has on our communities. So far, we have I've talked with folks at Accenture, Allstate, Cabrera Capital Management, CBRE, the Bears, the Cubs, Chicago Sky, Digitas, Dream India, Lurie Children's Hospital. And every single one of them has enthusiastically agreed to participate in the board of the Chicago Parks Foundation. And this is a work in progress. This is just the beginning of building this board. And the goal is to have a core board by December. Briefly out outline some goals. We want to be able to establish with our new board of directors a strategy, a structure, and a fundraising plan, working with the Park District to create these programs and also educating our board members as to the needs of the Park District and our park system. So again, thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I hope that this is just the beginning of many presentations that we will be providing to our commissioners. Well, let me just, um, you know, I, I, I want to welcome you. I think you're the right person at the right time. And I think this is one of the most important things that we can do. We have to establish ourselves uh, in the Chicago philanthropic landscape as uh, right next to the cultural institutions, right next to the hospitals and the other institutions where people um, write checks to support. And there isn't any reason why we can't be right there. Um, I'm certainly encouraged by the things that you've emphasized because I think it is the alignment that we've got to get right for this to succeed. The alignment with the 501c3, the nonprofit, and the alignment then with, with the board and with Park District leadership. And the things that you've talked about, um, about governance, are things that are going to survive the personalities and the people that are here right now. Um, and, and I think give this a chance for longevity. As you've pointed out, this is something that happens in every city. Um, that the impact that phil philanthropy makes in New York and in San Francisco on their parks is staggering. And it just doesn't stop there. In Chicago, being a great city, we have enormous upside with, with this effort. So I'm so happy that you're here, that you've gotten off to, to this kind of start. And please know how important we know this is. The uh, David Rockefeller did this years ago uh, with the National Parks. And when he established the National <laughs> Park Foundation, he said that this was going to give the margin of excellence. This was going to take good to great. And, and I think that's what we want to do. I know Chicago Park District is already great, so we're going to take great to greater. But uh, I'm really happy that you're here. This is very important. Thank you. Thanks, and thanks very much for the opportunity. I, w I do want to tell you that um, being in the fundraising and development world in Chicago for a long time, um, in the conversations that I've had, people are really excited about being able to give. And you and not just give, but get involved. So I think that I think that we're on to something. I know that people have been supporting the park district for a very long time. We already have some very robust relationships with so so many organizations. But now we will put together a structure and work together and and create a real development plan that I think will serve the park district very well. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the uh, the next thing on the agenda is the recognition of the mumble, uh, but they are not in here. They're in route. So um, do I need a motion to take that out of order? Yes, Take sir. something out of order. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against. All right. So where are we going to go here? 
we will go. What I would ask is executive session. Okay, so we're going to go to executive session. Okay. Did you want to make this uh, brief at the first? Okay, okay. okay. Come on. All right. At this time, we will go into executive session and consider various matters which are pursuant to the Illinois Open Meetings Act appropriately discussed in executive session. There will be a discussion of pending litigation pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 Section 2 Subsection C11 when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Take a roll call, please. Commissioner Salgado? Aye. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Vice President Lavelle? Aye. President Robert? Aye. Motion carried. The meeting is now in executive session.
Let's uh, take their seats. Okay, is there a motion to return to open session? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Yes, sir. Commissioner Salgado? Aye. Here. Commissioner Allen? Here. Aye. Oh, aye. <laughs> Commissioner Edwards? Let the record reflect that Commissioner Edwards has um, left the meeting. Vice President Lavelle? Aye. President Robert? Aye. Motion carried. Return to open session. Uh, the Board of Commissioners met in executive session to discuss pending litigation pursuant to the Illinois Open Meetings Act, appropriately discussed in executive session uh, 5 ILCS 120, section 2, subsection C11. No action was taken. Uh, litigation when an action against, affecting, or on behalf of the particular public body has been filed and is pending before a court or administrative tribunal, or when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent. Um, at this point, Mike, would you like to make a statement? Sure. Uh, in just a second, obviously, we're going to introduce the Mumble Champions and keeping in our traditions of, of emphasizing what we're about at the Chicago Park District. But if you men can uh, bear with me for one second, I want to do a little bit of house cleaning here. I want to read to, into the record uh, a statement which is very similar to what I read uh, into the House, uh, the House uh, Pension Committee. Uh, last week in, with regard to our pension. The Chicago Park District Pension Fund is 43% funded today. For decades, employees have been paying into a system that was not sustainable and taxpayers had little idea of the financial instability that lay ahead. The truth is that without a significant change, the Chicago Park District Pension Fund will run out of funds in 2023. And that assumes the fund can maintain a guaranteed 7.5% return during those years. We can't ask employees and future retirees to forego their financial security, and nor can we ask taxpayers to willingly accept burdensome taxes to pay for a system that isn't sustainable. Deferring action was no longer an option, so we began our work to develop a long-term plan. Being here with you today is the culmination of that process that we began nearly two years ago. Working closely with our labor partners, we have reached a fair solution for a fully funded retirement plan that can provide members of our Park District team and retirees with the financial security that they haven't had in the past and provide Chicago taxpayers confidence that we have developed a long-term plan for sustainability. As Mayor Emanuel has repeatedly said, Everyone needs to be willing to share the sacrifice, and any pension deal must involve the right combination of reform and revenue. Our proposal affects all stakeholders, the Park District, our employees, our retirees, and our taxpayers. Our current plan, again, is 43% funded. It does not provide or subsidize health care. The COLA is not compounded, but is a simple 3%. Contributions are 9% of the employee's salary, and the employer's contribution is a 1.1 time multiplier of the employee's contribution. The retirement fund will not achieve a 100% funded level unless all the changes proposed today are enacted, and they include increased contributions by the employee and the employer, 75 million of supplemental contributions, and changes to the retirement age and cost of living adjustment. In fact, with our proposed changes, we will reach a 90% funded level in the next 40 years and ensure our fund is sustainable for all stakeholders in the long term. I am most proud of this plan because we were able to develop it, working shoulder to shoulder with our employee labor union leaders. Our employees deserve a sense of security, and we were prepared to provide the resources needed to deliver it, but only if the revenue from taxpayers was accompanied by reforms. So the taxpayers also achieve the same sense of security. With everyone having a seat at the table, willing to work together and share the sacrifice, we have the opportunity to secure a brighter future for the Chicago Park District. This plan ensures our employees, our retirees, our taxpayers, and the millions of residents and children we serve with park programs and services, like these young men on the wall, will continu continue to share in that brighter future. And I'm proud to say that the bill passed with 87 votes in the House and I believe 64 in the Senate. Those are overwhelmingly uh, majorities. And now we wait for the governor to sign the legislation. Congratulations. Thank you.
And if there is going to be applause, I want to thank Steve Lux, the entire team, Tom O'Connor, Becca Ryerson, our outside counsel, Dave Johnson, Pat LaVar, and everyone on the Park District team who had a hand in the pension reform. And Steve's pointing to someone I can't see. Oh, and Juliet Azimi, our budget director, who will be the star of the show in about uh, two weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, do I need, can I just return to the regular scheduled program, or do I need a vote to do so? I need a vote to do so. Okay. Is there so a motion to return to the? Motion to return to the regular? Or the order of the day? Regular so order of the day. So second. second. Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Um, hey, welcome. This is really exciting. Next, we have the recognition of the 65th annual Mum Bowl and 2013 Junior Bear Championship for their achievement of winning the championship for the third consecutive season. Wow. All right. Um, President Trobert, Commissioners, and Superintendent Kelly, thank you very much for your time. Um, Today is an exciting day. Um, the Washington Park Redskins are the champions of the two, uh, 2013 Mum Bowl. They're a three-peat, which is very rare in 65 years of the program. There's only been four other parks that have done that. I want to um, name the gentlemen that came today because I appreciate them uh, getting right out of school, which left at 345. <laughs> um, uh, Noah Jones, fullback. We have also Antonio Brown, tight end and linebacker. Eric March, who's a tight end and linebacker also. He held that trophy for a long time. And uh, last but not least, Jalarian Little, who's been playing for, he'll be playing uh, what we like to do in this program. He's been playing for five years, and he still has one year to go. So this is the four gentlemen from Washington Park. I uh, want to give them a round of applause. And I, I do want to recognize the park supervisor, Janie Collins. Because this program has a, a lot of things going with it, and I appreciate everything you do with the park. The area manager is here, Cordell Hopkins. The physical, the physical instructor and the coach, Coach Derek Richmond. And also from the sports and recreation staff, the athletics manager, Adrian Loza. And our, and our commissioner of the program, Roberto Lugo, Jr. So um, this year is a special year also because we named the trophy after Coach Mitchell, um, a, a longtime friend of the Park District and a legend in football in Chicago. Did great things at Brother Rice, but he also did great things for the Chicago Park District. So if you look at the trophy, it was renamed this year in honor of Coach Mitchell. So it's a traveling trophy. It has all the 65 years preceding and hopefully 65 years in the future. Winners on there and Washington's etched in there as a three feet. Thank you, too. Well. The gentlemen have a little uh, token of their, uh, for you guys, uh, for the commissioners as well. I'm very proud of you. You're my home park. Oh, you are crazy. <laughs> All right, next on the agenda is a report from the committee on
on administration. Okay. Well, Commissioner I'll Lavelle. Page seven. <laughs> okay, here we go. Reporting for the committee on administration. The unflappable Commissioner Lavelle. The Committee on Administration met on November 13, 2013 to consider matters referred from October 10th to November 13, 2013 and hereby recommends that its report be adopted. Adopted item number one, authorization to enter into a contract for occupational illness and injuries and alcohol and drug testing. Adopted item two, authorization to modify the contract for an enterprise content management system. Adopted item three, Authorization to enter into a contract for building automation system maintenance and repair services district wide. That concludes the report of the Committee on Administration and I move for its adoption. May I have a second? Second. Oh, will Secretary take a roll call for the adoption of the matter? Commissioner Salgado? Aye. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Vice President Lavelle? Aye. President Robert? Aye. Motion carried and the report is adopted. Uh, next, we will hear the report from the Committee on Programs and Recreation. Commissioner Salgado. Uh, the Committee on Programs and Recreation met on November 13, 2013 to consider matters referred from October 10th to November 13, 2013, and hereby recommends that its report be adopted. Um, item uh, number one, a uh, request to initiate the 45-day notice period to name the North Bridge a feature in Jackson Park in honor of Nancy Hayes. Um, adopted item number two uh, request to initiate the 45 day notice period to name Pratt Beach Park in honor of Toby Prince uh, and adopted item number three request to initiate the 45 day notice period to name park number 503 in honor of Clara D. Schaefer that concludes the report um, of the Committee on Programs and Recreation I move for its adoption there is second second if no objection, we'll apply the last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. Motion carried and the report is adopted. Uh, next, we will hear the report from the Committee on Capital Improvements. Commissioner Salgado. The Committee on Capital Improvements met on November 13, 2013 to consider matters referred from October 10th to November 13, 2013 and hereby recommends that its report be adopted. Adopted item number one, authority to accept the transfer of approximately 40 acres of property located at 83rd and Lake Michigan from the City of Chicago for the expansion of Park Number 566 and the transfer of approximately 2.55 acres of Ellis Park to the City of Chicago. Um, adopted item number two, authority to acquire approximately 0 .09 acres of property located at 2422 South Trumbull for the expansion of Julian Hope Lemus Park. Uh, 1066 adopted item number three uh, authorization to issue change order number one restoration uh, of the Van Buren footbridge and North Stair in Grant Park adoption adopted item number four authorization to enter into a contract for park 553 construction and adopted item number five authorization to enter into a contract for the design and engineering services for Morgan Park Sports Center. That concludes the com report of the Committee on Capital Improvements and I move for its adoption. There's a second. Second. 